Hello and welcome to the Casino Traders Group. Our website is blog.casinotrader.com and we want to thank you for watching another one of our videos, one of our educational videos. And most of you know that we like to start our videos off with a little humor. So here we have a little cartoon talking about the backup cord being a bunted cord. And we know in the, the ups and downs of the stock market, you know what our backup plan should be having a trading plan or a trading system or stops. And so uh, if you don't have that bungee cord, I guess the, uh, the market can seem out of control at times, especially recently. So you're coming to the third part of our series on how to trade channels. Um, in this video, we're going to actually pull up charts and put the different types of channels up on a couple of futures and see which ones are giving us the best entries and exit signals and which ones helping us follow the trend and really just again trying to figure out what's the best way to use ch channels for trading. Now sometimes they're called uh, envelopes, sometimes they're called channels, but overall they're used to determine undervalued and overvalued levels. And the most traditional way most people think about them are the two lines, one above and one below moving average. Um, so the first video we talked about um, straight channels and some examples of straight channels are trend lines, uh, consolidation uh, lines and also linear aggression. Now linear aggression also can fall under the next type which is standard deviation and that is because linear, linear, linear regression lines are at a standard deviation from the middle whereas trend lines you just draw them yourself so uh, linear regression lines are straight and they are at a certain uh, distance, defined distance away from the middle. Also under standard deviations we have the popular Bollinger Bands, Keltner Channels, Momentum Bands. And again, we we spent the first two videos explaining what they are, giving you the foundation, giving you some visual pictures of what these are. And I'm going to introduce a little bit with the price action ba bands this time. That's a little new. But what we want to do now is actually pull up the charts and put each one on and take a look and have a conversation of where to go from here. We're going to go ahead and start by examining Bollinger Bands. I have a YM chart here, and we're looking at Friday, April 9th uh, action. And we're just going to kind of use this and, again, put Bollinger Bands down, Keltner's down, and Mobile Bands on. And one of the first things to understand about both Keltner's and Mobile Bands and Bollinger Bands is that you have to identify the type of day it is. On a narrow range day, then we want to use these bands as overbought in oversold levels. So when we came down here and touched the bottom of the bands, th those were oversold levels and you buy. Uh, when we hit the top of the bands, that's over bot levels and you sell. However, on days that we are breaking out of the narrow range and we are trending, now we want to use it as breakout. So in this situation here where the market consolidated and the bands narrowed and when we gapped open, the bands spread apart that was actually a buy signal for the Bollinger Band breakout and it actually done really well. The other thing that notice on Bollinger Bands is this 20 moving average in the middle and notice how the market interacts well with it. Came, came back, tested it, went up, tested it, and then when we really broke it, we went down hard, came back, now it's resistance. So the thing about Bollinger Bands, again, overbought, oversold levels, and the 20 moving average can be resistance and support. Identify the type of day, narrow range, or breakout, and use those signals. Now let's go ahead and compare it with Keltner's. I'm just going to go up here on my TOS platform and go look at my studies. I'm going to click on the Bollinger Bands, say stop showing, and I'm going to go to the Keltner's and say go ahead and show those. And let's take a look. Again, we're still looking at the YM. We're also using 333 tick charts. Now, um, here you'll notice that the bands don't spread as wide apart as they do with the uh, Bollinger Bands. So, again, when we do see these uh, touch the bottom of the bands, uh, buy signals, touch the top of the bands, sell signal, uh, that's okay. But the other thing that we see a little bit clear on the Keltners is that breakout above the band is also a buy signal. A breakout below the band is also a sell signal. So you can see it a little bit clearer on the Keltner's versus the um, uh, Bollinger Bands. Uh, but again, the premise is still the same. Buy a touch of the bottom band, sell the top of the uh, top bands, and then you buy the breakouts if we close outside of the bands in either way. And the 20 moving average still acts as support and resistance. 
Now we're going to look at mobile bands. So I go back up here into my studies. Uh, go with the Keltners. Now I'm going to turn those off. And let's bring down and show the mobile bands. Again, developed by Dave, Dave, Dave Elliott. And they are called Momentum Bands, just short for that. And now you'll see we are not playing the overbought, oversold levels. We are just playing the breakouts. <clears throat> so when we close above the bands, that's a buy signal. When we close below the band, that is a sell signal. We're not worried about overbought, oversold levels. We're just playing the breakout. And one of the good things about this, and here's a good difference, is certainly with Bollinger Bands and Keltner's, you've heard about walking the bands. And you, you, you have that here also, but what you see is that the bands act as a good support level. And you know I can stay in this trade because we have not broken the, uh, the band, or I can stay in this trade because we haven't retraced back above the band. So they also act as good signals, and they act as good support to tell you to stay in the trade. So once again, let's go back and take a look at the Bollinger Bands. Again, identify the type of day. Is it a narrow range? where I'm playing the, the touch of the top of the bands down to the bottom and vice versa? Or is it a trend day where I'm playing the breakouts? And you can see we would have got a sort of a breakout signal here. Do you play the breakout when the bands spread out? Or, or do you wait for a close above the bands? Uh, many play the close above the bands or below the bands. But let's go ahead and watch your eyes. Watch your eyes because now we're going to add in counter. So it's going to get a little, little messy here. And what we'll see is that, again, the Keltners are narrow. Their bands don't spread out as wide as the Bollinger Bands. And, and so in a couple instances, like right here, the Keltners would have given you an earlier signal to get in and get out, whatever part of the trade you're in, because they're not as wide. However, here where we got a signal on the Bollinger Band, we basically got a signal on the Keltner at the same time. Again, depending on whether or not you go with the, the spreading open or where you go with the close above the bands. And over here, you know, we're getting the signal at the same place. So you're getting very similar signals. Uh, it's just that on, on occasion, uh, you will get an earlier signal with the counter because they do not uh, expand as wide. Now let's go ahead and, and add the, Bollinger, the momentum bands on here. And again, remember the difference. Momentum bands are more of a trigger signal because you're just playing the break of the band versus the Bollinger bands, which is all about the volatility. So what we're going to see here, and again, especially for our futures trader, here is where we're getting our breakout entry on the Bollinger ba mobile bands, where up here is where we got it on the Keltners. Same thing over here. We got a Keltner break uh, mobile down here, and we don't get it to the Keltner here, and we don't get it to the Bollinger band here. Again, over here, you're going to see similar things. You get earlier entry signals. So if you're a futures trader and you want it to get signals, you're going to get your best signals with the mobile bands, whereas... Uh, Bollinger Bands and Keltners are going to be a better measure of volatility. So I think that I've shown what you want to do in any case is first identify the type of day. If it's a narrow range day, then yes, you probably want to use Keltners, you probably want to use Bollinger Bands and identify those overbought and oversold levels. However, on a trending day where you're looking out for breakout signals, I think I've shown that you want to use Momento Bands. And what I want to do is give you one more comparison just so that you guys can kind of get an idea. And as I was learning about hiking the seat candles, which I have on here, um, there was a great YouTube video by Dean Malone about price action channel. And basically what he did is he took a five moving average and he put it on his charts, one at the low and another one at the high as far as plotting it. And he uses the same rules as Dave Elliott, a close above is a bias, uh, a close below is a sell signal. And you can see that we kind of get similar signals. This blue line is this price action channel, the five moving average. And you can basically see that when we close above the Bollinger Band, the mobile bands in the price action channel with the five moving average give about the same similar, same signals. And you're going to see that across the board that we get very similar signals. And so uh, as futures traders, uh, get a little bit earlier signal here. So on a couple occasions, we get an early entry on the price action channels of the 5 moving average than we do with the mobile bands. But really, I just want to give you another comparison. And for our future traders looking for breakout signals, I want to give you a couple options, mobile bands and the 5 moving average. So in closing, which one should you use? Well, 
On narrow range trading days, we want to look for overbought and oversold levels using the Bollinger Bands and the Keltner Bands. On breakout trading days, we want to find our breakout signals by using Momentum Bands, MOBOs developed by Dave Elliott, or our Price Action Channel, two five simple moving averages developed by Dean Malone. You guys know about our partners. We've got a great five-part audio se series on developing the right mindset, charting platform, our futures traders, uh, $300 e-mini, uh, 20 free contracts, our future trading plans, turnkey, and live professional trading advice. Thanks, guys. You can lose your money, trade at your own risk. I'll see you next time.